All right, today I'm going to show you how to create a swelling vector field that is responding to a target point. Okay, I'm going to start with constructing a point. So type construction, construct point, P point, construct point. So that will give you a point that moves. Let's move back to top view and that will that will generate a point that can move along x and y and z axis. So I'm going to give that to a parameter and type 10. So this will immediately generate a slider which varies from 0 to 10. And I'm going to connect that to x and y. So that moves diagonal, you know. And the next is we're going to generate a points in the space type populate 2d so here we go populate 2d so that will generate a point or a number of points in the space that's been defined by this region and and we can control the number of points and we can repopulate those points by tweaking the numbers in the slide uh, numbers in the seed so let's define a uh, define the boundary typing rectangle so we're going to generate a, a shape which is a region and this will generate a rectangle and that's been defined by x and y and you can also control you can also set the location of that rectangle by add that plane to p so let's type 20 so i'm gonna i'm gonna make the, rec the size of the rectangle 20 by 20 Okay, so that's been set. So you see that green square there. So that's the boundary. So let's connect that R to R. So see the points are all moved within that boundary. And let's type, uh, let's, let's assign the numbers here. And then you want to control that number too. So I will add 0 to 500. So you can populate the points all the way up to 500. So if you connect that to N, see all the points be disappeared just because we got zero in the count. So if you slide it all the way up, you can get 500 points in that region. So bring it down to somewhere around 100, somewhere around 100, that's good. Now I'll show you how to regenerate these points. Uh, so all you need is the seed slider, which is one to 10. You can get a greater number here, but for now I'll just need 10 variations maybe. So you see that it will recompute all the points and the location. So I'm going to set that back to 1. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to create a relationship between the center point here to these points. So in order to do so, we need a vector to point. So type vector to point. So let's take a look at this node in particular. So all you need is A, which is which is a point A here. You just need another point B, so which will be these points. So all you need to do is drag that to A, center to A, and the points in points in the space goes to B. So let's visualize for the sake of understanding. So let's type display vector. I need the red one, simpler. So point goes to anchor point goes to A and vector goes to B. So C we generate that relationship. All the points are heading out to these points in the space. So leave that display on. I'm gonna generate another, you know, the, another vector points. We will be using cross product, which means that it will need two vectors. At the minute, we only have one vector between this point to that point. We just need another. We have to generate another uh, relationship, which is related to that point. Uh, it means all vague at the minute, but it will, it will come clear once you follow the step. Um, so let's generate the cross product here by typing cross product. 
So what we what I will do is that all you need is one vector which goes to A, and we need another vector point. Sorry, we need another vector data here which goes to B. Uh, then it will generate a orthogonal uh, a vector between both two vectors. So all we need to do, if you take a look at the perspective view, all we need to create is that, okay, I'm, I'm going to bring it all the way down to one. Okay. Okay, well, two is fine. So, so let's take a look at that point in particular. All we need is another point that moves along the z-axis that will immediately generate another another vector moves from here to z-axis. Okay, and I'm gonna. So the the way to do so is that all you need all is typing unit z, and we need a parameter which varies between 0, 0.0 to say 5. The reason I'm, I'm segregating into a decimal point is to get a smoother transition. So imagine this is this as a resolution. The more segments you have, more fine the resol resolution will be. Uh, but in this case, all I need is probably 0 to 1. So, so, which means that you will have 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.0, all the way up to 1. So I'm going to connect that to Z. So now that will allow you to move these points uh, in Z direction. Uh, there are a number of ways to do so, but at the minute I'm going to stick to the one that we used previously it's by typing addition. You can assign the Z property to these points. So let's move it all the way along. So now see, you see that as I move this along the way, the points are moving in Z direction because of all because of this node in particular. So now I'm going to generate the vector, typing vector to point. So what I need is starting point, which is A, and end point, which is that B. Okay, so so we now have, so let's visualize this. So I'm going to copy this and paste, and A goes to anchor, B goes to V. So now you see, now we have generated another vector. So we have completed, you know, and we now got two vectors that is related to each other by this point. Um, so let's merge these two. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to repopulate the points all the way up to probably somewhere around here. So I'm going to go back to the top view again. So, so this is missing. So you see this is flagging up as orange. All we need is completing the data by putting V to B. Okay, so now this I'm going to turn this off, select both of them, right click of the view. So this generated the vector relationship. Then now we need to visualize it again. So at this time, I'm going to use another display, type display. Uh, so that point goes to these points. And we know that this has now moved in perpendicular direction to those two points, well, orthogonal direction to those two points, um, sorry, to, to, to those two vectors that we generated previously. Uh, this looks a bit heavier and chunky. Now, let's add color to these things. Um, and the relationship we, we want to establish here is the, 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 the data or the, or, the, or the length information between the center point to these points in the space, and the further it gets from away from the center point, I want to turn this arrow into red, and the more close closer it gets to the center point, I want to turn that into green. So it sounds like we need a gradient of colors. So it's that easy here again. So let's type 
gradient. So you're going to get gradient here. So, so now we have to define the colors here. So it's quite simple. Right click the dot. And I want to get very red here. And move it all the way up to 100. And you want to move that slide somewhere around here. Right click. I want to make that a bit orange. Okay. Orange, orange, where are you? Okay, right there. Okay. And we want to add more nose here. So click that rainbow wheel and move along here, somewhere around here. And I'm going to turn that to yellow. That's about right. And I'm going to make the end green. Click that. I'm going to right click, move that to somewhere around green. It looks about green, right? So now we generated that quite nice transition between green to red. Okay, so okay, let's and then we have to gather the data. So all we want is the length data. Okay, so that length has been established already between the center point and these points by 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 connecting these two into vector. So that holds the information of the length. You know, we we know that if you turn that on for a second, we know that it now has calculated, you know, the distance between those points. So I'm going to turn that off again, turn off the preview, and we want to create domain by create bands, okay. So this, this node allows you to create minimum to maximum domain, and we have to feed this information, so you see that, so it says Define value between 0 0.3794 to 13.6. So that's the distance, maximum to minimum. So we have to deconstruct that, deconstruct that domain, deconstruct domain. And that gives you the starting to the end. So start goes to the L0, which is the lowest, and end goes to L1, which is the highest point. So now that range has been defined between um, that lowest point to the maximum point. Um, we need a data input. So that data again holds here, L. The L goes to T and this T goes to color. So now you can generate that, you know, the color. You can assign those color to each individual vector information, vector arrows, and you can also define the size of the or the width of that arrow but add that L to W. This looks very chunky and heavy but you can unitize that size by go by going to uh, U here and you're going to unitize that right click that and set the boolean uh, to true. So now all the errors gets homogeneous, which means that it's been unitized or normalized in other term. Uh, and it looks a bit light actually, so let's increase the population, okay, all, all the way up to 188. That, that looks about right. I'm going to select and turn off these things. Uh, right click and preview off, then now it looks very clean. Okay, that's it. Um, and you can also check whether this information changes by moving that center point along the way within that within that region. And you can also reassign that. You, you can repopulate the points, and this will react to that. And also, you can increase the density. So that's it. All right, that's it for now, and um, hope you enjoyed it. Bye.